ENFJ or INFJ, how to tell the difference. Now, these two types are very similar. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Audible. Audible has over 180,000 audiobooks for you to choose from, download, listen to on your phone, your tablet, your, your desktop, wherever. And right now, for the first 7 billion people who click on this link, if you go to audibletrial.com slash FJ, you can get a 30-day free trial of Audible, which includes a free audiobook. Free stuff is nice, so I would suggest you take advantage of this offer. audibletrial.com slash FJ, free audiobook. Let's do it. So the INFJ's dominant function is introverted intuition and the ENFJ's dominant function is extroverted feeling. This difference between the two of them is what we're looking for when we're looking for the differences because that makes them, you know, focus on certain things in life and it also makes them react badly more to other things in life. So first, the way to tell the difference is to see what each type is primarily focused on. So if we think of life as being like a movie, the ENFJ and INFJ are focusing on different things in the movie. The ENFJ is looking at the characters and why are the characters doing the things that they do? What's their motivation? What is driving them? How do they feel about the decisions they've made? Whereas the INFJ, as they're watching this movie, is looking at what are the themes going on underneath the action and what is the general structure of this story and the INFJ is going to be trying to guess ahead to be like what's going to happen because they've seen movies before so they're like okay I can generally guess what's going to happen next. Both types are going to be doing both things but primarily one or the other. And once you start to pay attention, wow it's really thundering outside, once you start to pay attention, once you really start to pay attention to people you'll see that there are some people who are just focused on the people and some people who are not so much focused on the people. They're focused around everything else around the people. Just start looking for it, you'll see it. Of course, life isn't a movie, so in real life, you'll see this manifest itself with the ENFJs by actually bugging everyone around them. They'll be asking questions all the time. You know, when they're watching a movie, they're just trying to dissect what the characters are doing, but in real life, they can be asking everyone around them, why are you doing this? Like, what is motivating you? What are you feeling right now? The ENFJs are really obsessed with what is everyone else feeling and how are they going to feel when, when certain things happen. Now, INFJs do that too because they have extroverted feeling second. But remember, the primary thing for the INFJs is the introverted intuition, which is kind of like in real life, the INFJs are trying to create a system or maybe a few systems in their life so they can bypass concrete reality, right? They're trying to guess ahead all the time to get ahead, to skip over the menial details. It's sort of like, it, going back to the movie thing, it's sort of like they're trying to fast forward the movie and be like, I bet I know what happens next. Now, of course, that is harder to see in real life. With the, the ENFJs, it's kind of obvious. They're going around bugging everyone, right? They're asking a lot of questions. But introverted intuition, being a perceiving function, is not really that active. It's just like taking in uh, information. It's like, it's not even really taking in information. It's taking the information that the INFJ already has and working it into some kind of system, some kind of meaning. Like I said, it's not as obvious for INFJs, but keep your eye out and just see, is this person bugging everyone around them all the time or do they kind of take a step back a lot of the time? Before we move on, let's stop real quick and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. And while we're here, if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, so next, the INFJs and ENFJs will also struggle mightily in different areas and this is a way to tell them apart. ENFJs have a much easier time. They'll stay a lot more calm when they have to make quick adaptations. INFJs, they don't like that at all. All right, so let's use an example where there's an INFJ and an ENFJ at work and they both have to download some new software and use it in order to do a project. The INFJ 
is gonna freak out. Like they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing ever, my life is ending. The ENFJ might not like it, they might complain, they might be like, I don't get this software, it sucks, whatever, but they'll just like, they'll kind of roll with it, right? They'll be able to adapt much faster. And both types will ultimately be able to learn the new software and use it and get on with their lives. But for the INFJ, it's gonna be a much more difficult thing to deal with and the ENFJ will be much more quick to adapt. INFJs have inferior extroverted sensing and the inferior function is the opposite of the dominant one. That means they're way out of whack, all right? So that means that INFJs are extremely uncomfortable when they get thrown curveballs in the concrete world, like, you know, a new software program. If we go back to that movie example, it would be like if, the INFJ is watching this movie and is like, oh, I have things figured out. They're trying to fast forward, you know, they're guessing ahead about what's going to happen. But then there's a sudden twist and it's completely different. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. Crap. And a lot of it happens because they're trying so hard to look ahead and be like, oh, I've got this figured out. I know what it all means. That they're missing these like little details that are popping up. They're missing just like what's right in front of them, it, the, what's actually happening in the movie. And so then they can't make those adjustments on the fly and they get taken off guard. They are paying less attention to the movie itself and what is actually unfolding and paying more attention to what they think is going to happen. And now notice that that example before with the software has to do with a thing, something where the INFJ is forced to deal with an adaptation on the fly, with taking in some new information and using it. So then we move on to a different example. Let's say we have uh, a husband arguing with his wife. They have a disagreement about where they're gonna go on vacation. The wife, she wants to go to the mountains because her family is there and she wants to hang out with her family. But the husband, he wants to go to the beach because he just wants to relax. He doesn't really want to be around her family. Now both the INFJ and ENFJ might feel discomfort in this and eventually might both work through it and come to some kind of happy arrangement ultimately. But the INFJ is gonna be like, okay, I see your perspective, here's my perspective, let's work through this, let's figure it out. The ENFJ is gonna feel much more distressed about this because it has to do with you know, differing opinions, a decision that needs to be made, and the ENFJ is much more likely to just kind of, they're, they're not gonna be able to put their opinion forward in a way that's calm. Like they're gonna feel very, it's gonna come out really awkwardly when they're trying to defend, when the husband is defending, he wants to go to the beach man, if he's the ENFJ, it's gonna get awkward. He's, it's not gonna be a very comfortable thing. Now notice that this negotiation about where to go on vacation is all about, it's all about making a decision, making a judgment, deciding what's the best thing to do. And it centers around people and their opinions. And that's where the ENFJ struggle because their inferior function is introverted thinking because their dominant function is extroverted feeling. So the thinking and feeling the judging functions, the decision-making functions are out of whack. So when it, comes to, when it comes to a disagreement like this, where the ENFJ has to put forward their opinion, uh, they, they don't like it. It's like in a, in going back to the movie example, it would be like if suddenly the characters in the movie turn on them and are like, hey, what do you think, buddy? And the ENFJ is like, ah, can I call a friend? <laughs> I don't know. Because the ENFJ feels like their, their introverted thinking, their logical decision making, that's very personal to them, it's basically their opinion, you know, what works for them. That shouldn't be something they should be having to express. Everyone else should be doing what the ENFJ is doing and looking out for his opinion right? Every, the ENFJ is always wondering, what is everyone else feeling about this? They expect everyone to do that for them, to be like, hey, look out for my, what I think is good, what I think is the, you know, the, my introverted thinking, watch out for that. And so they freak out when people don't do that. 
which is like a lot of the time. It's harder for them to stand up for their introverted thinking decisions. If you have any other observations about what you've seen or the differences between INFJ and ENFJ, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive.